Next speaker, Srimati T. Sumati. Thank you, Honorable uh, Speaker, sir. I rise here to oppose the Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Amendment Bill 2021. Sir, at the outset, I would like to express to this August House that I'm deeply grieved and pained when I heard the Prime Minister, our Honorable Prime Minister, coining a term, Andolan Jeevis, in the context of a former's protests. Sir, the phrase rights of man by Delisley Byrne says, has helped to create two great republics of modern times in France and America. But our Honorable Prime Minister has derogatively chosen another term, Andolan Jeevi, when it is the basic rights of a former brother and sister to protest and to show their resistance. So coming to the discussion on the bill, again, this has given me an opportunity to bring, to reminisce about an old term. <laughs> Sir, I'm concentrating on the bill only, coming to the bill only. I am coming to the bill only. Or are you obsessed with Adolan Jeevi? No, that is, Arti, I have every right to express my grief, sir. Now I am coming to. I am not yielding. This is, I have every right to express my uh, grief and uh, pain. Sir, coming to the bill, again, this has given me an opportunity to be reminiscent about an old term called the social contract, coined by Rousseau back in Vogue. It is also a two-word term on which the foundation of a democracy rests. It is a contract between the ruled and the rulers where the ruled give up their freedom on an assurance by the ruler that their natural rights, namely life, liberty and property and civil rights shall be protected. But when the Jammu and Kashmir Act 2019 was implemented, the BJP government has not only breached that contract, you have buried democracy, you have buried federalism, you have buried the rights of liberty as well as the civil rights of the people of the Kashmir. Sir, this bill, which seeks to replace the ordinance, tries to solve the issue of all India service offices in the two union territories created after the abrogation of the Article 370. And I have a query in that, sir, which I'll be coming soon in a bit. Sir, when you promulgated that amendment, we were told that as soon as normalcy is returned, uh, there will be uh, the, the, the status of the statehood will be restored. Sir, with this bill, our hope is now gone. We thought that was the last straw, but now this is the last straw, and you are going to be pinning up nail after nail after burying peace in Kashmir. Sir, in August 2019, you not only bifurcated a state, but reduced its status to that of a union territory, thereby increasing the direct central hand in day-to-day -day management. Sir, I am reminded of the famous opening lines of Charles Dickens' Tale of Two Cities, which said, this is the best of times and this is the worst of times. I would say this is the worst of times that India has ever witnessed in her pages of history. The BJP government has imposed all the draconian laws. You have imposed CAA, you have uh, uh, imposed uh, NRC, and now the draconian anti-farmer, three anti-farmer laws which were hanging like a democracy sword above your head. And I'm sure definitely you will have repercussions in the forthcoming elections. <laughs> Sir, I would like to quote a great Thiruvalluvar who said, Kudi thaliyi kol ochum maani lamannan adi thaliyi nirkum ulahu. Meaning, a king who would respect its subjects' opinion and the rule for their benefits will not only be respected, but also be loved by people. Sir, I'm coming to the bill. Sir, has the BJP government opted for a referendum before revoking the Article 370? Has it cared to ask the opinion and consider the feelings? When you boast of a paperless budget, you are running a compassionless, commitmentless, dedicationless, visionless government which has brought such draconian laws. Sir, there is a tendency of the government to bypass in this parliament to take over the people's rights and follow the ordinance route. And this is the route. See, by Sir, I am coming, I am not... Oh, repeatedly she is saying that the parliament has been bypassed. Similarly, Mr. Hasnayan Sahib also said, this bill was duly passed in this house, also in the other house. You are abusing, you are abusing the sanctity of the parliament. Fielding. Sir... 
sir the dmk has always the dmk has Allow always withstood on its principles Allow of federalism and democracy sir Allow sir, sir speak, our Mr. leader Ballo. great anna has evoked Ballo, we have Allow a federal structure that is Allow. why the framers Speaking. of the constitution wanted a federal structure and not a unitary structure i am quoting our great leader anna because many political philosophers have pointed out india is so vast in fact that it has been described as a subcontinent the mental health is so varied the tradition so different the history so varied that that cannot be a steel framed unitary structure here unquote sir by reducing the stature of jnk from a state into union territory you have not only failed to bring administration closer to people but rendered a serious blow to our freedom sir coming to the bill now coming to the bill sir i have a query in that bill i said uh, coming to the statement of the object and reasons of this bill it states that section 88 of the said act provides that the members of the cadres of indian administrative service indian police service and indian forest service for the existing state of jammu and kashmir shall continue to function on the existing cadres there is a huge deficiency of the officers of all india services in the union territory of jammu and kashmir sir i am maybe uh, forgiven for my ignorance but i would like to get a clear uh, um, explanation of this uh, uh, phrase huge deficiency what do they mean by this huge deficiency sir and it is supplemented by another sentence the developmental schemes centrally sponsored schemes and other allied activities suffer due to non availability of all india officers in the existing cadres of the jammu and kashmir as such there is a requirement of merging it with arunachal pradesh goa mizoram union territory cadres so that the officers in this cadre can be posted in the union territory of jnk to meet out any deficiency to come out sir your government boasts itself on pioneering atmanirbhatra or self dependence if there is huge deficiency deficiency of the officers in the union territory of jammu and kashmir to meet out any uh, challenges then why not put more effort in making it as a more self reliant from the local officers themselves why must we have to merge the cadre and have the region depend on the other states so here also i am reminded of a quote by russo who said to form a state not only the intelligent or the competent enter the contract but all both intelligent and the non intelligent as parties to agreement all are equal though in other ways they are dissimilar this is the meaning of political equality how to make this real it is difficult to say but equality is not a kimaru and it is the duty of the government to maintain equality in even uh, 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 appointing or in even the maintenance of the cadre status so the section coming to section 3 of the bill which i mean section 88 again it says the officers so born are allocated on arunachal pradesh goa mizoram and united Ter union territories cadre shall function in accordance with the rules framed by the central government here the cat is out of the bag and the skeleton comes from the cupboard because rules framed by the central government is the key sentence wherein the federal rights of the state are put at stake and this is a, 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 a nail straightly uh, placed on the coffin of democracy and the federal structure so if you are going no, to uh, please, uh, please, mandate this the sessions of you if please you are conclude. going to mandate this sort of modus operandi with a lot of brutal majority what is the guarantee that tomorrow with the same modus operandi the government can bifurcate states like west bengal kerala and tamil nadu because <laughs> i'm sure they are going to lose in the electoral Uh, okay. mandate okay. by with the support of okay. our people sir our party leader mr mk stalin has strongly opposed all these draconian laws and i also place it on record here that i oppose this bill vehemently and let me conclude this by saying that john lock the father of liberalism had argued that the obligation to obey civil government under the social contract was conditional upon protection of the person sovereigns who violated these terms could be justifiably overthrown revolt is the right of the people for when injustice becomes law resistance becomes thank duty you. Thank, thank you very much thank you ye video ungalku pidichirundha please like and share pannunga marakama inga channel la subscribe pannunga